Hi guys and good morning. Thursday the 12th of September. Just gone 8 o'clock here in London and it is ECB day. The guy on my right hand side, Mario Draghi, his penultimate uh, meeting, uh, interest rate decision meeting uh, with the ECB before he stands down uh, and Christine Lagarde takes over. Of course he is standing down on the same day uh, as Brexit is supposed to be happening, the 31st of October. So we'll we'll have a look over uh, his latest, uh, well, his upcoming meeting, what's on the agenda, what's expected, and we'll go over some scenarios for what could happen. Just going to have a, a quick summary of, uh, of the markets going into trade as we are now. Uh, if we have a look at the S&P, just bringing that into picture, while just drifting lower a, a bit this morning, we did push higher overnight, hitting 3,000 in late trade before in the early hours uh, of the UK morning anyway, pushing as high as uh, 30, 20. Just this morning, however, we have had a, a slight bit of uh, risk off here. As you can see, Bund pushing higher, breaking that trend that's been in play for the last couple of days. Gold as well, back now above 1,500, uh, trading at 1,508. And T-notes as well back above uh, its pivot and high of the day. So uh, very much last night was a, was a case of, you know, stocks were pushing higher, all was seemed well. However, this morning, just coming under a bit of pressure, and you've just seen the DAX here, of course, opening 12 minutes ago, already filling that gap. So in terms of people trading that, definitely a key one to, to keep an eye on. If that was to, to keep going, uh, well, you can imagine US stocks have got to repair some of those gains uh, that we saw last night. What was the reason behind it? Well, your man Donald came out to, to save the day for stocks again, it seems, even though they've obviously been on a, a decent journey anyway. Uh, but tweeting last night at the request of Vice Premier of China, Lui He, and due to the fact that People's Republic of China will be celebrating the 70th anniversary on October the 1st, we have agreed as a gesture of goodwill to move the increased tariffs on $250 billion worth of goods, 25 to 30% from October the 1st to October the 15th. Now this delay uh, in tariffs basically has, has been taken as, as positive. Uh, you know, China made some concessions uh, in the previous day. So while this small concession, if you like, is, is not gonna be the be all uh, and end on, it's the end of the trade war as we know it, uh, it was enough last night to send stocks higher and having a look at the S&P you can really see since we broke above that 29.45 area it's just been uh, a case of just waiting before we hit that 3,000 which we did of course in late trade last night at its highest yes, uh, this morning we were only for that 0.32% away from all time highs which is uh, it's quite incredible considering we have only had one rate cut uh, and the trade deal isn't even complete yet. Uh, so really here pushing higher after this technical break and then of course we've had some decent trade stories since then, uh, most notably last night. However, it is starting to get a bit of an unwind and I was actually on the, the way into to the office this morning looking on Twitter and people just weren't buying it to be honest and you know, I saw a few tweets saying I'm going to sell tonight, I'm going to sell tomorrow uh, and well maybe overnight wouldn't have been the best trade possible but you can see now we are starting to just unwind uh, a touch here. Uh, also last night and we're just seeing the, the dollar weaken a bit uh, following this increase in, in volume, you can see the euro of course we'll come onto the ECB later pushing to its high and the pound in my middle here as well doing so that helping gold we also saw donald trump attack the fed uh, again nothing new there but uh, his comments last night the federal reserve should get our interest rates down to zero or less we should then start to refinance our debt interest costs could be brought way down while at the same time sustainably lengthening the term we have the great currency power and balance sheet the usa should always be paying the lowest rate no inflation We'll come on to that later. We do have inflation coming out. It is the only naivet, I guess that's how you say it, uh, of Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve that doesn't allow us to do what other countries are already doing. A once in a lifetime opportunity that we are missing because of boneheads. Um, 
it's not surprising, of course. The dollar initially on these, these tweets didn't really weaken too much, to be honest. But we are seeing a bit of weakness ahead of um, the ECB coming up. And, the, of course, uh, with the ECB now expected to, to lower rates, Donald Trump wants a bit of that action and, and the Fed to take uh, well, further cuts into consideration next week. Uh, of course, today as well, not just about ECB. I'm just going to switch over to the calendar here before we go over that, that stuff. We've, we've got at 1.30, so the time when the press conference is starting. So any euro dollar traders certainly want just to be aware of, just though, as, as Draghi does start reading out the statement, at 1.30 you've also got the inflation numbers out of the US uh, as well. So those figures both expected for the core and, and the, the straight inflation at 2.3. Uh, having a look at this for the the core number, just going back, well, here you've got five years, you can see it's just been solid. It's been solid above that uh, that 2% or on 2%, really going back to the beginning of 2018. So going pretty well there. The uh, expected figure to be another increase from the previous month, so up to 2.3, and then not far away from uh, the 10th of August last year where we had 2.4 which has been the highest for quite some time so last month coming in 2.2 beating expectations this month expected 2.3 uh, and certainly along with that press conference just something to be uh, aware of so over the last couple of days we, we've had uh, obviously Trump start to uh, pick up or ease on the trade talks we've had the uh, easing of Iran sanctions or the thought that they're going to do that uh, and we've also had yesterday uh, OPEC cutting t uh, 2020 oil demand uh, at the same time so oil just coming under a bit of pressure yesterday obviously had the uh, the DOEs uh, as well but and again you can see uh, this trend line helped push this this move lower this has must have been left on from yesterday uh, making the initial test just before the DOEs, then we, we break through. And I was actually delivering a lecture uh, at 1.32 o'clock, and we, we saw these, these sort of comments come through that were just reported there by, uh, by Reuters. And, and we have really since then, well, we're now trading at 56, but started to perhaps just top out. And we, we do have the, as well, uh, today, the the JMMC meeting. So again, oil traders, I'm sure you'll be you keeping a, a close watch on that. And over the last well few weeks, well, I think it's a six week high we made uh, on uh, on Tuesday up towards that that key level from uh, the beginning of or end of August, I should say. So not necessarily six week high, a couple week high, uh, up at uh, nearly fifty nine dollars. So we uh, not. You know, not getting too carried away here. I think you know these uh, these sanctions. Trump trying to get oil price down again. You know, he does, it's, it's anywhere near 60. It seems he wants to come out and, and start talking down price and OPEC cutting 2020 oil demand as well, just adding f more weight to to this move to the downside. So certainly intraday, I think for now, I would be preferring to to look for places to to get short. I actually do like quite the look of the. I guess it, it falls quite nicely on the pivot today. You've got uh, previous support from the the ninth resistance on the day before, well, the the Friday before. So that coming in around 56.50 for me remains quite a, a key area that I'd uh, be focusing on. You're lying in the sand almost, uh, if you want. Any you no know, real push higher? I'm not going to say that is today, but just keeping a, a close watch on this trend line retest as well, which. You know, if it was to happen anytime soon, it would be coming in around that R1 uh, and those previous lows uh, as well. So oil traders, a couple of levels to, to be aware of there um, just after uh, the 2020 cut. Moving over to the ECB. So today, all about the, uh, the, the uh, 1245 interest rate decision and then the 130 press conference. Draghi's penultimate uh, meeting. Well, I've, I've put together a couple of, let me just drag this into to picture here, a couple of scenarios to, to keep it simple. Obviously, we'll go through this uh, uh, ahead of 12.45 and then the press conference. 
you know, well, if we have a look at the, the, the bigger picture, just to begin with, you can see the euro, every time we've tried to recover over the last few weeks and really months, we are then met with some dollar strength. You know, Trump has tried to weaken the dollar uh, through his comments. It has had no such luck and the euro has, has come under uh, significant pressure each time. Yesterday we had a, a technical break, no more than that, uh, really pushing us uh, to the low, breaking through all support levels. It reached, reaching the bottom of that initial pennant as well and we actually just come back to retest that now so worth again keeping a, an eye on whether you'd want to get really too stuck in uh, before the announcement or not I'm, I'm not too sure but anyway I put together here some uh, scenarios uh, the the base case at the moment is is between 10 and 20 uh, basis point cut uh, I, I mean, my personal view is, is that we're going to get that 10 um, rather, rather than the 20. So the fact that we are in between just off the, the idea that maybe they you know, come out and say 10 and everything else is as expected, I think we will get a bit of euro strength from that. Obviously, no cut is very unlikely and we, we get above 111 on the spike if that was to come through. A 20 basis point cut. I think initially we, we break those lows and, and we look back down towards that, that low of the year, uh, depending on what else has been said. So, of course, uh, 145, uh, 1245, we're going to get those announcements. And, you know, you could have a scenario where they do a 20 basis point cut and a no QE package and then it, it conflicts off that. Uh, but just if everything was to remain equal, uh, this is the, the scenario that I would be looking at. So if I was to hear 10, I'd be preferring... Uh, to be looking for a bit of euro strength just on the, the basis that we're in the middle probably about 15 is is the the, the sort of the estimate if you like uh qe package so again we're it's, it seems that uh, we're we're pretty much bang on priced in for 30 billion a month for 12 months so therefore if they were to delay it um then we're going to see some some euro strength come in so similar to uh, the idea that if they were not to cut and the delay, well, we get that high very quickly, and, and really we, we're probably looking at, well, I'd say 112 uh, over the coming days as well uh, off that. So, therefore, 30 billion, uh, 12 months, pretty much exactly where we would be trading. Maybe a, an initial unwind of some ultra dovish bets, but pretty much remaining where we are. Any more than that, 40 to 60 billion, uh, you're going to see a, a move lower uh, off of, of a very dovish reaction there, more QE than expected. And also the, the idea that there's no time limit on it, I think would be quite a dovish reaction. If they weren't going to put a, a limit on how long this QE package was, was going to last, like I said, the, the 12 months is the consensus, this would also be seen as, as relatively dovish. A couple more to, to go through here. You've got the, the best dovish scenario. This is where you break that low of the year. 20 basis point cut, 30 uh, or more than 30 billion QE package, no time limit on duration. We get the low of the year um, quicker than you can say Bob's your uncle. To the upside, best hawkish reaction, and this is again that uh, above 112 uh, eventually, I would say, is, is a no cut and delayed QE announcement. Uh, my personal view of, of what I expect will happen, let me just clear the text up. I, I think he will initially disappoint a touch. I think we're going to get the, the 10 and the 30. I think we get close towards that R1 and, and those, those highs before uh, some dovish comments, downgrades of growth, press conference, and, the, and then we drift back lower. And then I would say over the coming days, maybe before the, uh, the Fed meeting, I think we get a retest of that low of the year. Uh, of course, you've got the other factor of that inflation number to, to take into consideration. Uh, I just think we'll have initial uh, hawkish reaction before it turns dovish, uh, would be my view. Having a look over as well, what's, what's made them come to this, this moment where they're looking to, to cut rates? We can see here, obviously via Trading Economics, just having a look at their, their recent data points that they're going off. Uh, what we've got here, the, the GDP has, has been struggling, so we're looking potentially for a, a downgrade on this. Hasn't been above one for, well, for, here we're looking, I mean, here since 2010, uh, which, is, which is pretty crazy for that uh, uh, GDP growth. Last one coming in at 0.2, not looking very good there. You've got the inflation number, nowhere near there, 2% or uh, just a bit below target. Last time we were there was... 12 months ago and then funny enough I mean beginning of the year 12 months ago 
uh, we were thinking this time is actually when there's going to be a rate increase, a rate hike. And now, uh, obviously, we're in the situation where we've been pushing lower. Inflation is low. Will we see any downgrades on that? It's expected. So again, if not, hawkish reaction uh, would, would take place. Also, the manufacturing numbers, uh, just bringing this into picture, obviously, the other two are more important. But we're in that contraction phase and it's not looking too good again uh, at lows not seen really since again what we're looking here 2012 uh, as well so not uh, not too good however you've got uh, some positives the, un the unemployment rate in, in Europe is is now almost back down to those 2008 lows so it has been uh, improving uh, to the downside here quite nicely uh, but overall the picture and everything I would take into consideration uh, we're going to look for the cut. Growth isn't great. But to be honest, like most central banks, you know, at their last meeting uh, where they were more on a wait and see approach, you then had the Fed that have cut, the RBA have cut as well. So following suit, you could, uh, you could argue there. Uh, just going to bring in here, I think you should be able to see this. If not, I'll, I'll put it in the, the chat later. Uh, but it's also on ING's um, Twitter feed and, and if you don't follow them you know I would, would absolutely recommend that you do that you know fantastic head of central bank meetings just putting together their base case scenario crib sheet and you can see they're actually going for for a 20 uh, basis point cut which is you know, absolutely fine they believe it's going to be perhaps a bit more dovish than is expected so their base case they're looking for for the 20 uh, basis point cut, looking for the 30 billion over that 12 months, and it's a good way of just uh, you know looking at uh, what part of the market is going to be uh, thinking here. We've also got to think about the the inflation uh, outlook and growth outlook uh, as they will move the market. So the current stance over the medium term, underlying inflation is expected to increase. Uh, however, we're now looking that uh, recent data suggests the CPI pickup will take longer. Uh, so comments on that worth listening out for and you've got the the very dovish and very hawkish reactions also listed there growth outlook current stance the risks to growth outlook remain tilted to the downside and we're now looking recent data suggests slowdown in activity uh, which you've seen from recent data points it's looking like it's going to take a bit longer uh, before we see any kind of uh, recovery uh, as well I've just seen some comments actually come through china commerce ministry chinese firms have begun to inquire about prices for u.s farm goods this again was was something uh, you know just going off ecb topic topic this was you know talked about uh, last night uh, as well and just talking about these these meetings taking place so nothing new uh, off those comments really uh, but yeah worth uh, you know having a look at this this sheet from from ing really uh, helpful and, and just putting together some scenarios and being best placed to almost you know not necessarily predict but have your outcomes if this was to happen where the, the price could go and of course not just the euro you've got to be doing it for European equities and uh, and bonds as well uh, which uh, will put you in good stead going forward uh, as well gonna be uh, certainly it's, it's coming into it's a bit of a a touchy subject this this QE <clears throat> you've got certainly the recent times the the German the Dutch the Austrian and even the Estonian central banks very against the QE package um, however you know and, and comments certainly from from Twitter and and previous meetings Draghi has, has earned his reputation for for getting his own way so I think that's you know it, it there's not going to be too much in in the way of uh, you know a surprise uh, I would say so yeah it's going to be a good meeting I think um, certainly over the, the last couple of years if you just think back to uh, each ECB meeting how many times you think oh, this is boring and you know Draghi's done such a good job at literally getting price to finish the day exactly where it started uh, I don't think today is going to be one of those days uh, I think it will uh, we'll see a, a decent move actually uh, in markets Having a look over the calendar for the day, we just transition that. So going through this morning, we actually do have some uh, some numbers out of Europe. Industrial production at 10. Very, very, very unlikely we're going to move. One, because of the ECB. Two, because it's July numbers uh, as well. So almost disregard that uh, as an opportunity, I would say. Uh, and then, of course, lunch 
quieter period, that's when I would you know recommend having a look at these scenarios in a bit more detail. 12.45, the announcement. 1.30, the press conference. And also 1.30, you've got those inflation numbers out of the states uh, and lower tier initial jobless claims, which you know, obviously less focus is going to be on. Got the meeting as well, which is, is tentative. I'll, I'll confirm times when uh, I see that. Uh, and of course, speakers just confirming that 1.30 uh, of draggy. We'll have a, a quick look over the charts. Technically, now we've obviously done the the euro uh, and oil, S and P. Uh, just be keeping an eye on uh, on <clears throat> on on the DAX to maybe lead the morning session. You've got some interesting points. Three thousand, you would expect now to be an area of support. The the high that we broke through, retested yesterday, twenty nine twenty one, another key level. And of course, we're not far away from that all time high. Um, and we spent quite a lot of time over those few days around the 25th to, to 30th uh, of July uh, as a resistance point. So 30, 28 around there, really worth keeping uh, a close watch on. Brexit headlines, relatively limited, you'd be pleased to hear for now. Uh, I still like the look of, uh, of 124 for a medium term short, haven't really threatened there enough, just the 50 ticks away. We are starting to get squeezed in. You could argue from from both directions here, and and finding a, a floor around 123.17. So that's something I would would keep an eye on. A, you know, a decent move perhaps if we were to break below there. Obviously, just be careful about trading this market overall too technically, uh, with the the headline risk that could occur. But you do have a nice trend line over the last three trading sessions uh, that if we were to break and 123.50, uh, a decent move could. Could occur and then maybe i get that 124 that i would want to, to see come in test hold uh, before looking to, to get a move uh, lower safe havens just uh, pausing a bit the dax just recovering uh obviously going into to the session I, I would recommend sitting on on the hands ahead of the ecb um but uh, i'll get that uh ing sheet in the chat and any questions as usual please uh, do let us know we'll be on the mic throughout the day and of course ahead of the uh, announcement at 12.45. But uh, if I don't speak to you, I hope you'll have a, a great trading day.